Hello. This lesson is a motion and travel graphs specifically. The yellow is to draw and interpret travel graphs. I need you to be able to draw and interpret velocity time and distance time graphs from data giving, i.e. a very simple table, and to be able to compare and contrast DT and VT graphs. This is a good point to mark your starting point. All you do here is just put a cross if you can't do any of the outcome or a tick if you can do it, a tick with a question mark if it's 50-50, so that at the end point you can see where you started and how much progress or not you've made. Let's look at speed then. This is a very simple equation for maths. If you know the distance travelled by an object and the time taken to travel that distance, you can work out the speed. You divide the distance by the time and it's always a good idea to keep it in standard units. If you're working in SI units for distance, then you do SI units for time. Meters divided by seconds. That gives speed a unit of meters per seconds. If the distance is really large and you have too many zeros at the end, it probably makes more sense to convert it to the larger unit kilometers, in which case time is also converted to hours, the standard conversion. 60 seconds is equal to 60 minutes. There is 60 minutes in one hour. Therefore, 60 times 60, you get 3 600 seconds in every hour, and so on. And the unit for speed is kilo, uh, kilometers per hour. It's really useful if you know how to change the subject of an equation from maths already. It would make your life so simple. If unfortunately that skill is not in place, don't worry too much about it. I am just doing physics, not maths yet. This triangle really does help that. You cover what you are looking for and you see the relationship between the other two. If you're looking for distance, you cover distance and you're left with speed times time. So speed times time equals distance. If you're looking for time, you cover time and it's distance over speed and so on. So you should be able to use this to work questions out. It is worth mentioning here. Any time a question asks you for how long, it is asking for time, units, seconds, or hours, depending on which you're using. When it asks you for how far, it is looking for distance. So let's complete a simple table then. This is just inputting information from the equation I gave you. To work out the speed, you take the distance, you divide it by time. The first one is pretty simple. Zero divided by zero, it's obviously zero. The second one, the distance is 25. The time is 20. You work out the speed and you put it down for me. Can you do this really quickly for me? Right, we're going to plot that data on a graph and the first thing you need to do is to decide which orientation you're going to use. Are you going to use portrait? Are you going to use landscape? And you can only make that decision when you refer back to the table. Time is your independent variable so it's going to go on the x-axis. Distance here in the first one you're drawing a distance time graph. Distance to be your dependent variable which should go on the y-axis. You always remember to put the units in. So time in seconds, you either write the full seconds or you write the correct symbol S, nothing else. Distance here is in meters. Again, you write meters or the standard M in the brackets and you've done the same thing. Okay. Next thing to consider is your scale. As you can see, time is going in an interval of 20. So it would make sense to choose an interval which is in 20, so a multiple of 20. Distance is going up in 25s, so a multiple of 25, maybe even 5s. You choose the scale sensibly. Whatever you do, you need to make sure that the scale is uniform and it allows that graph to cover a minimum of two thirds of the graph paper. When you're done with the distance time graph, turn the graph sheet over and can you do the same with this speed versus time, so velocity time. 
time is always the independent variable it's on the x-axis in the second scenario speed or velocity becomes the dependent variable which goes on the y-axis on a distance time graph when there is no movement the graph is flat as you can see from the blue line here he started from a certain distance he just sat down he didn't do anything so it was just a horizontal line when you're moving at constant speed, it is a positive correlation and it's a straight line. The gradient of this line is the speed distance over time from maths. The gradient is the change in the y-axis divided by the change in the x-axis. The change in the y-axis was distance divided by change in time and you worked out speed. A steeper gradient means a faster speed. You know, when it's a more gentle decline, it is going slightly slower. So the blue line is my reference point. The dotted line above it is traveling faster. The dotted line below it is traveling slower. Now let's see if you've taken any of this on board. Can you use the equation and can you answer the following five questions for me, please? Let's see if you got them right. If you got them all right, then you're ready to proceed. If you didn't, can you go back to the beginning of the lesson, review, come back and do the questions again? My favorite part. We're describing the graph and that graph tells three main stories, really. There are three episodes. There was the earlier part where there was a uniform gradient and then it was horizontal there was a uniform gradient returning to zero it's really simple at the beginning the object was moving at constant velocity so it could be me on a jog I had a jog and then I got to the local park looked outside and thought oh what a brilliant day wouldn't it be better if I sit down so I did for whatever reason I did I sit there I look at the kids on the swing whatever and then I decide, you know what, I've had enough of a rest, let's go back home. And so I return to my starting point. You can say that the distance at that point is zero. I started from a place, went somewhere else, stayed there for a bit and returned. It could be you to the shops, you buy whatever from the shops and return home. This second one is still a distance time graph, but you can see some things very different at the end. There's a curve. Well, what does that mean? All it means is that the object is not traveling at uniform speed. So it could be me going to work in my car, listening to Capital Radio or whatever, popping my head along, coasting. And then I looked on the dashboard and saw the time OMG. I am going to be late at this rate. Come on, quick. And that's exactly what happens in this graph. This object was traveling at a uniform speed. For whatever reason, it decided to speed up. So you can see the curve on the top. Difference between speed and velocity, which can be used interchangeably sometimes. It can be quite annoying, but the only difference between them is direction. Go 20 meters per second. The next logical question is where, in which direction? Speed doesn't really tell you in which direction to go. The minute you add direction to it, it changes it to velocity. Speed is a scalar quantity. Velocity is the vector equivalent. Speed in a specified direction is velocity. The units are the same. Okay, let's look at velocity time graphs. And you can take a look at the velocity time graph you drew yourself. A few things to note about velocity time graphs. When you have a uniform line, a straight line with a uniform gradient, with a positive correlation, it is showing you constant acceleration. So the gradient here is acceleration. 
big difference between a VT graph and a DT graph is that the horizontal line here doesn't mean the object is stationary. It means that the object is traveling at a constant velocity. The third episode here is very similar to the first. It's a positive correlation. It's a straight line, uniform gradient. So it's accelerating. And when the line returns to zero, in this case does not mean the object has returned to starting point. It just means the object is not moving. Velocity is zero. When a VT graph shows a negative correlation with a uniform line, then it is decelerating constantly. Constant deceleration. The gradient is the acceleration, like I said before, and formula you need, which is the maths formula you must be familiar with. Acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity. All you're doing there is working out a change in velocity or a change in speed divided by the time taken to make such a change. V minus U over T is equal to A. You must have seen this question a few times on the maths papers, especially in change of subject. The unit is meters per second squared because velocity is meters per second divided by time in seconds. So acceleration should be meters per second per second, which is a little bit untidy. You tie it up and tidy it up and you end up with a unit of meters per second squared. On a VT graph, the area under the graph gives you the distance traveled. And you can see in this particular shape, it's a lovely triangle. It's a right angle triangle. The formula for area of a right angle triangle is half times the base times the height. The base is obviously your time. The height here is your speed or velocity. So here, let's look at the first 10 seconds of this journey. In the first 10 seconds, the base was 10, the height was 40. So if I want to know the distance traveled in the first 10 seconds, I've got to do half times the base times the height. 40 times 10 is 400, times half is 200. So the object traveled 200 meters in the first 10 seconds. Let's expand it to the first 20 seconds then. In this case, we've ended up with two shapes. We've got the triangle, so we've worked out already. But on top of that, we've got a rectangle here. The area of a rectangle is pretty easy. You do the length times the breadth. The length is 10. The breadth is 40. 10 times 40 is 400. Add that to the 200 which had already been travelled. And the object has travelled 600 metres and so on. So, let's have distance time graphs and velocity time graphs side by side. When there's no movement, I think that's pretty straightforward. Constant speed, however, is slightly different. A constant speed or uniform speed on a distance time graph is a graph showing a positive correlation. It's a straight line. On a velocity time graph, it is a straight line but horizontal. And the area under the graph will give you the distance travelled. Constant acceleration, you get the flex, the curve, on a distance time graph. But on a velocity time graph, it is just a straight line with uniform gradient. The area under the graph is the distance travelled. So to recap what I've said up to this point. On a distance time graph, the gradient gives you velocity. The unit, obviously, is meters per second. Increasing gradient means the object is accelerating. Decreasing gradient means the object is decelerating. To accelerate is to speed up. To decelerate is to slow down. Zero gradient means the object is stationary. So when the line is horizontal, it means the object is stationary. It's not moving. On a velocity time graph, the gradient gives you the acceleration. Area under the graph gives you the total distance travelled. Zero gradient means the object is travelling at constant speed, which is a key difference between the DT graphs and a VT graph. And if you've understood anything I've said up to this point, you should be able to work this out. Have a go.
how we review and see how you've performed. If you got them right, well done. You understand travel graphs. If not, can you go back to the beginning of the lesson and work your way back to here, review and let's see how you do. These are the typical type problems you get in maths. You get given a graph, calculate the speed over O to A, and from A to B, and from B to C, and so on. And here are the solutions. Did you get them right? What about question two?